Wi-Fi Tribe started about five years ago, and it was really just a moment in, in my life where I I had done I just been working all the time. I was trying to you know build these these different startup companies, and they just weren't working out. So I was I was fed up with it. I'd, I'd spent way too much time focused on that, and and I said, okay, right now I need I just need to stop all of this and focus on my lifestyle, right? Because I'm you know I'm, I'm not getting any younger. Time is going by, um, and so I sent an email out to a hundred friends and said to them, look guys, we've got this house in Bolivia. I'd uh, love to invite you guys over there. It's kind of like my, my childhood home and uh, I've been to Bolivia a lot. So I can show you that country over the weekend. If you have work, bring it along. I'm gonna take my work along as well. I'll be doing some freelance work in that time. Um, yeah, and, and I'll just show you the place and we'll spend maybe four weeks there if you want to, right? So at that point, only about seven people or so said, yeah, sure, I'll go. And it was entirely for free, right? We were literally just inviting friends over. Um, and one of those people was my now co-founder and she had been traveling and, and working remotely for about two years up, uh, up until that time as well. And so she s said, well, why don't we try to make this something a little bit more sustainable so that we can do it for the long term? And that was when we then set up a quick website on a you know, really crummy sort of site builder, um, posted that out into a few uh, groups on Facebook and then probably had another few uh, people join in for that first trip. Um, but that was it. And then from there, really one month at a time, we would just decide the next location, go there. It was very, very organic until suddenly we realized that we just couldn't maintain our, our freelance jobs anymore, our freelance work, and we had to focus fully just on this thing, right? So that's really the story of how Wi-Fi Tribe came about. What does it mean to me? I've been working, um, well, working obviously at Wi-Fi Tribe, but I've been living really with this community for the last five years. I spend uh, typically about, what, 10 months of the year traveling and, and living really on site with, with everyone there. Um, so it's become a permanent lifestyle, this, this life of you know, living, living and working and traveling at the same time, but also spending this time actually with the people. So if you look at it from like a business perspective, people might say, oh, that's a bit weird. Like, you know, where does the CEO live with, the, uh, with, with essentially the, the customers? And we also always never refer to them as customers. It's, it's really just members and we, all, we are all essentially just members of that community, right? So that's what it means to me. And as we move forward with this, um, that's also the evolution that we want Wi-Fi Tribe to take, right? It's always going to be about the community, about bringing people, people back together again, bringing people closer together again. And travel is just basically one of those things that we all have in common, that we all love. It's one of the excuses that allows us to meet each other again and again around the world. There used to be a time four years ago where I knew absolutely everybody that came into Wi-Fi Tribe because I was meeting every single person on a chapter. And then we slowly started adding chapters. Chapters are our trips, basically, for four to six weeks in a place. Um, up until just before COVID, where I think we had about five trips running at the same time, and this would be in different continents, right? So Asia, Africa, uh, Europe, um, South America, we do a lot of trips there, right? So at that point, obviously, once we started growing, we did have to hire a team in to help us out with those different things. There's different people running the, the trips. We call them chapter hosts. It's a lot like a dinner host, basically. Um, yeah, and, and we've just had to scale operations, if you want to call it that, uh, in that kind of way, but we still try to make it easy for people to see each other again and again when they rejoin for another trip, right? There are people that have been with the community now for years. Um, I think the, I guess the leaderboard right now, there's somebody who's done 15 chapters with us, right? So, and each of those being about a month long uh, means that these people really are investing a lot back into this community. COVID at first hit us really, really hard. Uh, travel company doing co-living. You can imagine that that is the, the worst two things that you can do if you wanna try to survive COVID. So we had to just shut everything down in one moment. Uh, it took us six months to start our first trip up again, but we quickly realized that as long as we could make it through this, something really big was about to happen and something was, was about to change on a, on a global scale. So we've been looking at this industry now for, well, we've had an eye on it for five years, right? Ever since we started. Uh, and our predictions were always like, you know, maybe another five to 10 years, you're going to start uh, seeing a lot of people sort of shifting into this lifestyle because they're going to pitch it to their employers. Employers are going to see that there's value in giving people these benefits so that they can attract better talent, right? So there was a natural movement already that was happening. But what happened with COVID is that it forced the entire world into this global remote work experiment, right? And um, when they're now coming out of it, you see them, you, you see that people are, are going to be in a position where they can go back to the companies and say, well, it turns out it, it worked, right? It wasn't, it wasn't really such a big problem. Or even the companies themselves might say, hey guys, actually, this, this is okay. We're gonna keep doing this. And that's exactly what we're seeing now with a lot of these bigger corporations who've committed to maintaining their remote work status. So what does that ultimately mean for, for us, I guess, or for anybody in this space? Well, if people can work from home, they can basically work from anywhere. 
And we already knew that there was a huge portion of people who were you know, signing up to our newsletters who said, how can I get this lifestyle? When maybe only two or 3% were actually able to, to have that lifestyle, right? Those were the people that would then apply and, and that, that might then join the community, right? Um, so we're now looking at that 97% of the people who are interested in Wi-Fi Tribe, but were never able to do that. And now is a moment where so many of those people are slowly going to start being able to take advantage of this kind of travel.